Today we're going to figure out what's better, fire bells or modern day horn strobes. People are always surprised to find out how many bells are in Canada and I think it'd be interesting to see are bells as effective as modern day horn strobes. For those of you in the US, I'm sure horn strobes are nothing new, especially as you guys have always had mechanical horns for a long time. Here in Canada though, that's not the case. I've grown up with fire bells my whole life and pretty much so has everyone else. Basically since the time of commercial fire alarm systems were invented and we are still, I've still seen buildings in Canada installed with bells as recently as about three years ago. I've still seen some grocery stores installed with bells. They're getting less and less common. Now most buildings are starting to use are now starting to use horn strobes, usually system sensors, sometimes Miracom, and sometimes EST. But still, I would say the good majority of buildings, probably 80% of buildings in Canada, are still using good old 10-inch mechanical bells. Most of those are Edwards. So because of this, and because I've pretty much always gone through school, except for my new high school, with bells, I do have a slight bias to thinking bells are better, but I'm going to try and push that bias aside of liking bells better and really think about what's needed for a fire alarm device. So I think we should take a very common alarm. That would be the System Sensor Spectra Alert Advanced. And we will compare this alarm to one of the most common bells in Canada, that is the Edwards MB10-24. Another very common bell is the Edwards 439D, but they are quite similar. And the Edwards 439D only really performs better if it's on a system doing something like Temporal 3 or March Time. That's when it comes, that's when that bell works better because it's not a motor bell, it's a mechanical bell, so it can start up pretty well instantly. Now, I don't really know of any good way to rate the devices, but I think I will go over the pros and cons of them. First, I think I will go over reliability, which is that is a spot where horn strobes definitely take the lead, but not in durability. As far as reliability for the device to be just installed properly and never have any mechanical damage done to it, Horn strobes definitely take the lead. They don't have moving parts. They don't have motors. It's just a speaker that outputs that sound vibrating at a certain frequency. It's a pretty simple device. However, bells do have moving parts. It does have a motor that bashes around a piece of metal really hard against another solid metal object. So they do have more parts to break and after enough years, they will die eventually. That doesn't cover physical damage. As far as that, bells definitely take the lead there. Horn strobes, they get damaged pretty easy. They'll, they're just plastic, pretty cheap. Bells though, they can take a pretty good beating. Especially in gyms and schools, we'll have to always cover up horn strobes with cages. Bells, we still do lots of times, but there's plenty of schools where we don't. And there's never been a problem where that school's been there for 50, 60 years, and the bell has never had an issue with getting broken. just They're just solid metal and they are built a lot tougher. So sound output we can't get to yet. And as far as strobes, I'm not worried about strobes as they do make horns that are only horns, no strobes, and they do make strobe plates for bells. So that's not really a uh, concern. Now on paper, horn strobes sound like the better product and the better solution. But this is something that I feel, especially here in Canada, gets extremely overlooked and it's never a concern and it can't really be a concern because you can't do anything about it. It's just got to evolve with time and general knowledge. But that is that people aren't used to horn strobes here in Canada. Everyone's grown up and lived around fire bells. Everyone knows what a fire bell, what one sounds like, whether it's continuous or code three, that's just the alarm that's been ringing for fires for pretty much ever in Canada. However, that's not the case for horn strobes. They're a relatively new product and a new invention as far as fire alarm notification devices here in Canada. And I've actually heard of the problem happening where one of our schools, we replaced the fire alarm system and the first fire drill um, 
the students and staff didn't didn't know how to react to it. They did not fully understand what the alarm was. Eventually, everyone really pretty much clued on to it was a fire alarm, but there was definitely a good number of people that weren't 100% sure what that alarm signal meant. And there was people that didn't evacuate right away because of not understanding what it meant. And I believe there's also a certain urgency to bells ringing that just can't be recreated by a horn strobe. They just don't have the same effect and same harsh tone that really says there's something going on here and you should be alarmed of it. The horn strobes just don't have that same effect as bells and I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any way you can create that distinct sound of a fire bell. So that's a problem that will just have to evolve with time with people getting familiar with new devices. It's not gonna happen instantly, but I think there will for quite a while be definitely more of an urgent response to a fire bell that a horn strobe just can't replicate. And I think that totally gets overlooked and is quite important because many people agree with me that I've talked to that fire bells are just more effective as far as warning people. Ease of install. I've got to give that to the horn strobe. Bells can be a pain, especially pigtail bells, which is pretty much all bells. If bells could just snap onto a mounting plate, mounting bracket like most horn strobes do, they would be fine. Another advantage to horn strobes is their current draw. They are much less than a motor in a bell. Especially vibrating bells are much higher current draw than even motor bells and motor bells are still higher than horn strobes. Which higher current draw means more voltage drop to the end of the line and means less bells per knack circuit, which means maybe knack extenders, which means more expensive. Bells also don't have the confusing bit about a volume select. They come one way and that's the way you gotta use them. You don't worry about coding. You don't worry about any uh, settings as far as if it needs to be set to coded, continuous, temp three. You don't have to worry about any of that. You don't have to be worry about what the panel is set to versus the device. You don't have to worry about volume adjustment. You just put the bell circuit on and you have the knack put out whatever power you need it to, whether it's broken up power to create some sort of coding such as temporal three or march time or 24 beat per minute, I believe it's called 24. I might be at, can't remember but you don't have to worry about the device itself. You can change it at the panel. Don't have to change the devices in the field. Well, I think it's time we set these up and do some volume tests. Now I know I said I use the Edwards MB10-24, but we've got an Edwards 439D up here. They, I believe, put out a very similar volume. They sound about the same to me, and I believe they're probably the second or pretty well tied with the MB10-24 as far as use in Canada. So we're just going to use this bell. Now it is mirror tone, but it's the same thing as the uh, 439D. We will now test the volume. Now we will be using this decibel meter to check how loud our bell is and we will be taking this sound test from if we put the laser on the middle of the bell, 10 foot, six inches. So basically three meters, we will be taking our uh, measurement from. So 10 feet, six inches, or about three meters. I will be setting our meter to the max button. meaning that the meter will record the loudest sound it receives. Right now, as you see, if I speak up louder, there, I went up to 70 decibels, which is the loudest it recorded. So we will go pull the pull station. I will let it ring for about 10 seconds on continuous, and we'll see how loud it goes up to.
Well, there we have it, 111.9 decibels. I've written down our 111.9 on the whiteboard, so now we're gonna take a different measurement from inside the new room I built so we can get the bell go traveling through a couple walls. So I'm going to leave the demo board in the exact same place. I'm gonna leave this flashlight that the meter is sitting on in the exact same place so when we do our horn test, we can put it back there. Now we're gonna take our meter into the new room here and I'm going to set it down. In the entrance, this door will be closed in the entrance and sitting right here. Our max from right there and I will re-hit max. So wait, that'll hold. Reset to max. I don't want to speak too loud because I don't want to be louder than that bell will be. So I'm now going to put you in here like this so that you can see the meter and you can also see that the door is closed. I'm going to close this door. Well, there it was, 91 decibels. That would still pass our decibel test if this was a real system. That is plenty loud enough. So I'm gonna keep our 91.2 right here. I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna leave our decibel meter in the exact same place and switch it out for a horn strobe. So we've got bell at 10, not 10 inches, 10 feet. Bell, uh, let's just do in uh and we'll do bell in room and we had 91.2 okay let's quickly switch this out to a horn strobe Come on, the magneticness of this one is nice until it's not. This device comes from the factory set to temp three high volume. Number one, we want it on four, continuous high. Just to be fair to the bell, because, because the decibel meter will sometimes slightly get a louder reading after it's been ringing for a while, and temp three wouldn't do that, so it's only fair that we leave it on continuous. Okay, back in our room here, we're gonna take it off of Max. And we are back on Max again. And I will close the door and go ring my horn.
So what, 89 decibels, we were close, but we weren't as loud as the bell. We'll write that down and we'll try it again at 10 feet away in the open space. Set it back at max again. Try and get it on there so it won't fall over. There you got a clear view of the meter and the board. Once again, we are Hold that steady. Ten feet seven inches. We are, I guess that one inch closer just because the horn's less deep. Man, I'll tell you, both devices are loud when they're right in your ear. Ooh, 104 decibels. Well, that's not gonna cut it now, is it? Now, sure, we could do more bells and more horns, but I think it's gonna be the same result no matter what. Horns just aren't gonna be as loud as bells. There's, I can't see it happening. Um, and there's not really any point of doing a bunch of other devices as those really are the most common for each type that is the most common is the most common horn and it's the most common bells that I see in Canada. Well, those are our results. So as far as volume test, which was really the last uh, test or pros or cons that I had to say about this, then I guess the bell wins. So I've mentioned quite a few pros and quite a few cons for each device. So I'm really gonna leave it up to you guys. I think. The number one con for horn strobes is that they're not taken seriously and they don't come across as very ur urgent or important and or they're just not understood or known what they mean because they're a relatively new technology. I think that's the biggest con for them, which is completely overlooked as it's not really a fault on paper. It's just something to do with people and how they interpret it. But you guys can let me know what you think. Let me know what you think the pros and cons are and how you feel about the situation. Leave those down in the comment section down below. If you have any other if you have any other comments or questions, leave those down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.